Adding inventory in Masterpiece is as simple as going to the I Inventory tab and then clicking on the Items button. And then on the right, just click the Add button. Now you'll just fill out the appropriate fields in the appropriate places. I'll go ahead and put in the title called Blue Cypress. The addition type is one out of four. You have unique, open, limited, or non-stock. Unique by definition is one of a kind. Uh, open is stuff that you have quantity of more than one, so it's perfect for jewelry such as uh, rings or earrings, um, or calendars or stuffed animals or bouncy balls. Um, Non-stock is for services like shipping, appraisal, restoration, um, or you can even do framing. I'm going to make this one a limited edition. Notice when I click on limited, the edition size box appears. My edition size is going to be 500. Now I'm going to click on the ellipsis, which is those three dots, and tell Masterpiece which editions I have. I'm going to say I have a range of 1 to 100, and I have edition number 250. So I'm going to hit done. Now Masterpiece also records the attributes for each individual edition. For example, I'm going to click on the editions tab and notice how it lists all my editions. If I wanted to see a, a, a certain attribute on number two, I'll just click on number two and then I can go to the attributes tab, the locations tab, or transactions tab. Because edition number two may be sold, but editions one and the other ones are not. So each edition I click on would give me different attributes. It's also very easy to enter a new edition. If I click on the ellipsis again, and then put in another edition of let's say 300, it's as simple as typing in the new edition, hitting save range, and then done, and now Masterpiece will add that edition to my edition range. Your art category will need to be, your, in fact your art category medium artists and vendors will need to be entered before you start entering an item. To enter your category, you just do the drop down. In this case, it's going to be a photography. And then my medium, which is your subcategory, is going to be digital photography. The artist is going to be who, the person who made the piece. And then the vendor is, the, uh, is who you got it from. And I'll just do the artist and vendors the same, which may be the case if you're doing consignments. And the circa is um, AKA the year. Move into the top right, you have your show cost box. Let's say a customer walks in and you have Masterpiece open on your computer screen. Well, you don't want the cost or the consignment percentage or the vendor shown. So if it's safe, then you can have the show cost box checked, but if it's not, then you might want to set the default to uncheck show cost so those uh, fields are hidden. The subject field is a combo box. Uh, it's, a, it's a combination of a standard drop-down list and an editable text box. This allows you to enter a value that isn't in the drop-down. So every time you enter in a new subject, it will go into the drop-down. But in this case, my subject is not in the drop-down. So I'll just go ahead and turn, type it in. Taxable would be checked by uh, default, but you can always uncheck it. Um, this just ensures that tax is calculated during a transaction. And our code is the code by the artist or the vendor. So if you're doing a consignment report, you can print off a list of all the things that you've sold of that certain artist or vendor, and it will print off the titles and price and the other information you want along with their code. Um, it just helps the vendor keep organized. The scan code will be automatically generated when you hit the save button, and you can edit the scan code to whatever you want. Quantity on hand, um, this is good for uh, just seeing how, much, how many items that you have on hand. Um, when you sell one, obviously this quantity on hand will go down. Uh, it's good for open items too, that you have more than one, and of course unique items will um, always have one, so it will not be editable, and non-stock will not have a, uh, a quantity on hand. A reorder quantity is like a threshold. So let's say that um, you have an open item of 100, and you want Masterpiece to remind you to order some more when you go below a threshold of 10. So when you sell the, um, the, the item that brings you to that threshold, then Masterpiece will give you a prompt, or you can print out a report um, that, uh, that reminds you to order some more pieces. 
In the lower left, you have your purchase order number. Masterpiece will automatically assign you a number when you save this. You could go to that purchase order number that it gives you and print out a purchase order to give to the vendor. Then you have your cost and your price. Let's say that this blue cypress is on consignment for 50%. I'm going to put in a cost of $1,000 and I'm going to sell it for $2,000. Masterpiece automatically calculates 50% of 1,000 and just gave me the number 2,000. You can also change it to 40% and Masterpiece will update the cost for you. So this is saying that this piece is selling for $2,000. When it sells, the vendor, David Wallace, will get $1,000 of it. The quantity is 102 and because this is a limited edition, it's automatically populated. But if you have an open item, you'll want to manually put in the quantity. The purchase order cost is basically whatever you put in for this cost, and it can't be changed. And the reason being is because when you save it, a purchase order is generated, which is binding in a court of law. But really, the cost field is the most important field, and you don't really have to worry about the PO cost if you don't use purchase orders. Uh, then you have a total cost. So let's say that uh, this blue cypress has a frame around it. You'll want to enter in any additional cost in the costing tab, which we'll do another video on. Um, and then whatever you put in the costing tab will get added to the total cost and then give you a total price. This is the only industry that I know of where you can only partially own an item. So let's say that the blue cypress is on consignment, but the frame around it you own. So when you sell the piece, you want to get the full profit for the frame, but the vendor gets the, uh, the consignment for the item itself. Lot received just defaults to today's date and time, but you could always manually change that to the date that it was entered if you need to backdate that. Um, appraisal is just the amount that the uh, item appraises for. Then below that you have your dimensions. You have your art height, your art width, your frame width, or frame height and frame width. If it's a 3D piece such as a sculpture, you'll check the box and notice how it changes to art depth and art weight. So this is a two-dimensional piece. Let me just type in some numbers. And on the right hand side here you have your pictures. Just click the browse button and it opens up a go find me the picture window. My picture is going to the C drive, Airtay folder, pictures folder, and this piece is going to be called Blue Cypress. And then I'm going to hit the upload button and you can have as many pictures as you want um, associated with each item. And you'll just click on the, the next or previous to see them. And if you click on this arrow button, you'll get a bigger view. So those are the basics of adding inventory to Masterpiece. Now you don't have to add every single field when you enter an item. You can come back and add the fields later, or you can edit them down the road. We'll talk about the different tabs in different videos, but when you're done, just hit OK. And then that's it, and repeat the process.